Hello friends, this video on breathing and exchange of gases part 6 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we will talk about bronchi. What are these? These are the thinner tubes into which the trachea divides as it enters the thoracic cavity. Now as we discussed the trachea it goes up to the mid thoracic cavity. After that it gets divided into bronchi. So how do they divide? Now let us see the division of the um, trachea. So this is trachea. Let us suppose this is trachea. Now as soon as the trachea reaches almost towards the mid of the thoracic cavity, it, it actually branches out into tube-like structures, somewhat like this. So it branches out into three tube-like structures on towards the right lung and it branches out into two tube-like structures in the left lung. And these tube-like structures are known as the bronchi. So this is, let us suppose, this is the uh, right lung and this is the left lung. So this is how it divides. So these tube-like structures are known as bronchi. So here in this picture, it is not shown very clearly, but actually this is how it splits. In the right lung, it splits into three bronchi and in the left lung it splits into two bronchi. So these tube-like structures are known as the primary bronchi. So the right bronchus divides into three bronchi as I said that towards the right side it divides into three and towards the left side it divides into two bronchi. So this is how. Now these tube-like structures will further divide into thinner tubes like this which in turn will further divide. So this division will continue and that is how they are named as primary, secondary and tertiary bronchi. So as I said, the primary bronchi will be further divide to form the secondary bronchi. So this will form the secondary bronchi and the secondary bronchi will further divide into thinner tubes called the tertiary bronchi. Now, can you just imagine why so much of branching off is taking place? Because if there is so much of branching off, actually this will increase the effective surface area inside the lung, which will in turn help in the process of absorption. Because for absorption, more is the effective surface area, better is the absorption. So that means here the primary bronchi may be, as I, as I showed in this picture, let us suppose if this is your primary bronchi. Okay, just... I'm just trying to explain you what it is. So let us suppose this is our primary bronchi. This primary bronchi will further divide into secondary bronchi. Something like this. And these secondary bronchi will further divide into tertiary bronchi. So these are tertiary bronchi. Now these tertiary bronchi in turn will divide into bronchioles. So what are bronchioles that we will see in the next slide. But so much of branching off is because it wants to increase the effective surface area so that the net absorption can be increased. Now also try to understand the path which air will follow. Now air will come inside our body through the nasal openings, the nostrils. Then it will get into the nasal cavity. From the nasal cavity it will come into the pharynx. From pharynx it will come into the trachea. From trachea it will come into the bronchi. From bronchi it will get into the bronchioles. So as soon as it enters into the bronchi, we can say that air has entered into the lungs because bronchi is present inside the lungs. So bronchi means once the air has reached primary bronchi, it is there inside the lungs. Now, now after that inside the lung, it will start moving from primary bronchi to secondary bronchi, then to tertiary bronchi, then to bronchioles, then to alveoli. So that will happen. But now the air is inside the lungs. So let us look at bronchioles. These each bronchus further divide into finer branches which are called bronchioles. So these are again 
finer than the bronchi. So here you can see the bronchi, this is, this is the primary bronchus, the thicker one. Then it forms the secondary bronchi which are again thinner and that means bronchioles are finally very thin, almost hair like structures. So they are bronchioles. They are extremely thin and they are the terminal branches. So the bronchioles do not divide further to form anything else. So they are the last. They do not divide further. So they are supported by incomplete cartilaginous rings. Again, just, just have a note at all these things that all the structures which form a part of the respiratory system, they are quite tough and hard, especially these tube-like structures. Whether you talk about the trachea or you talk about the bronchi or the bronchioles, they all are supported by cartilage. So if they are supported by cartilage, that means they are not elastic in nature. They are like quite rigid and stout so that whether air is is there inside them or not they they will always be like that so they are also supported by cartilaginous rings and here if you see the um, trachea you see these ring like structures right those ring like structures are actually the cartilaginous rings so each bronchiole ends in a cluster of tiny air chambers called alveoli. So now when you actually look at the structure of the bronchi close, bronchioles closely, so they are like this kind of structures, very tiny hair like structures. But towards their end, they have some swollen structures, balloon like structures, you can say, they are called alveoli. So if these are the bronchioles, then their ends have some structures which are air chambers that is they help in exchange of air and they are called alveoli. So we are going to talk about alveoli in detail because they are the main site for gaseous exchange. They are the places where exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide actually take place. Because till now what was happening? Till now oxygen is only getting conducted. You took in the air, the air is getting passed from one organ to another. That's all is happening. There is no exchange which, which has actually taken place till now. But now the exchange will take place here at alveoli. So these are the tiny air chambers and each bronchiole ends into a cluster of such tiny air chambers. So if you look at any of these end bronchioles closely, this is how they look like. So the bronchioles will have like multiple air chambers like this, the swollen structures. And on top of that, you see these red and blue lines. What are they? They are nothing but the blood capillaries. That is the blood vessels. So these alveoli are in close contact with the blood vessels. And this is the reason why they help in exchange of gases. Now we will see how it helps in exchange of gases. But for now, you just try to understand the structure. Because if you are clear with the structure, it will be easy for you to understand how the process takes place. Okay, so each of these bronchioles will end up in balloon like structures, swollen structures and they are called alveoli and these alveoli will also have a tube like structures for conduction which is called alveolar duct and the walls of the alveoli as you see here, the walls have a close contact with the walls of the capillaries or the blood vessels. So alveoli provide a surface where the exchange of gases can take place because the surface of the alveoli and the surface of the capillaries, they are very much close to each other. So exchange of gases can take place. That means the oxygen which we have breathed in and which have reached up to alveoli, they can be passed on from alveoli into the capillaries or the blood vessels. And once the oxygen has been passed to the blood, blood can carry it to different parts of the body. Similarly, the carbon dioxide which was a product of cellular respiration, if that carbon dioxide is present in the blood, so the blood can also pass that carbon dioxide to alveoli and then alveoli can send it back through the same path that is al alveoli can send the carbon dioxide back to the bronchioles then to bronchi then to trachea and then it can be thrown out through the nostrils. So that way the exchange can take place between the blood capillaries and the alveoli. So exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. So walls of the alveoli contain an extensive network of blood vessels that is the capillaries as I mentioned just now. So we will see this is the most significant portion here because this is the place where exchange of gases or exchange of 
So this is the place where exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide take place. So if you have alveoli and you have the blood vessels, they are like very close to each other. So what will the alveoli do? The alveoli will send the oxygen to the blood vessels and the blood vessels will send the carbon dioxide to the alveoli. So this is how the exchange of gases take place and this is the most important part of respiration. So breathing is breathing, the term breathing just talks about taking in air, giving out air. <clears throat> Next part is exchange of gases that is sending in oxygen to the blood, taking out carbon dioxide from, from the blood. So that part is taken care by the lungs and to be more specific that is taken care by the alveoli of lungs. That is why it is said that alveoli are the functional units of lungs because they perform the most important function of lungs that is that is the actual exchange of gases. This is the most important function of the lung which is performed by the alveoli. So now let us look at the diaphragm. What is diaphragm? You are, in most of the pictures you are seeing that okay there is some structure at the bottom and that is named as diaphragm. So let us see what it is because diaphragm also plays a very important role in the process of breathing. So it is a dome shaped partition separating thorax from abdomen. So as I said diaphragm actually marks the end of the thoracic cavity and it also provides a support for the lungs because the lungs rest on the diaphragm. It is muscular in nature so since it is muscular in nature so it is capable of movement that is it is capable of expansion and contraction. Now that is the, that is, uh, the characteristic because of which diaphragm is of vital significance in the process of breathing. That's because when we inhale air or when we take in air that additional air needs an extra space to be accommodated. So that extra space needs to be accommodated provided by the lungs. Now if the lungs want to expand, I mean there has to be something which will actually provide that space to the lungs to expand and that space is provided by the diaphragm. Now whenever we inhale or we take in air the diaphragm contract and as a result, so diaphragm is like a dome shaped structure, a structure like this. This is the structure of a dome, right? So when it, if, if this dome, if I say that this dome contracts, that means it becomes something like this. It's, it becomes more flat. And if I say the dome expands, maybe it becomes something like this. So this is contract. And this is expand. So what would happen if the diaphragm contract? If it contracts then this dome shaped structure will become more down. So it will come somewhere here. So that means there will be more open space at the top and that open space can be utilized by the lungs to expand because the lungs are elastic in nature. So they will use up this free space and they will expand and that is how they will accommodate the extra air which we have inhaled in. Similarly, when we want to exhale, so we gave, gave out all the extra air which we had. So, so the air is given out now. So now the lungs do not need that much of space. So during that time, the diaphragm expands. So during expansion, it might go as long as this much distance. So in that case, the lungs will occupy less space. So basically, the contraction and expansion of the diaphragm provides the lung with appropriate amount of space during inhalation and exhalation. So that is how diaphragm plays an important role. So contraction and expansion of diaphragm adjusts the space in our lungs during breathing as I explained just now. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, Find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.